Last time on Kerbal Space Program. Damn it, Ike! Move out of my way! Ike, that's enough. Stop it! Move away already. I'm done with you. Ike just wants you to go to him instead of Duna. He's sick and tired of seeing Duna take all of his glory. Such a sad moon. Hello everyone, I'm the Solar Gamer, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Now, considering the last episode, Ike really wanted to screw us over, I think it's time to get him into the spotlight and travel to him. I think it's the least I can do after what happened. So I have constructed an interplanetary Mooner vehicle, and it's very similar to the Planetary Lander. Uh, there it is. As you can see, we got the stage down here that's going to get us out of Kerbin's atmosphere. This is going to get us out of Kerbin's orbit. This is going to get us to Duna's encounter. And then this is going to land us on Ike. So it should be interesting. We'll see what happens. But overall, this should work. I'm actually taking use of the Separatrons right here. Now, they are a bit overpowered. And when I say that, I mean when I activate them, they lag the game a lot. And it's not because my computer's slow or anything, because it's really not. But um, the particle effects on it are really high. So if it lags out for you, don't worry, it's not your computer. Well, it could be, but uh, most likely it's just because the Separatrons are a little bit too high right now. And it should be fixed soon. Okay, I believe we're ready to go. Okay, so we are here. We've got Kirk that's going to fly us to Ike. And uh, it is sunny. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god, it's almost an eclipse. That is crazy. There we go. Look at it. Oh my god. <laughs> Let me just take a couple pictures here, because that is amazing. Well, we do have a mission to do, so where is Duna? Exactly. What the hell is that? What is that? Uh, Duna is right there. It's not the best location. I do want it to be a little bit ahead of us. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time so that Duna is around here. Here should be good. We've already delayed this mission for 193 days. I think... Uh, I think Kirk is getting really antsy. There's been nothing else but this thing on the launch pad, and he's been stuck up in this capsule for 193 days. That's a lot of time. That's a lot. So, Captain Kirk wants to get to Ike. <laughs> we got Midmus up there, you can see that. The moon is nowhere to be found. We don't have another eclipse to launch at, but that's okay. It was cool while it lasted. Alright, and there's the little lag spike for the, the Separatrons. Which is fine, it's not bad. And then when it loses fuel, it really starts to turn. And I do not know the reason for that. But we can usually recover it quickly. I do that, switch to that, and then yeah, so there we go. Beautiful. Cool. Alright. Off to Ike. Well, first an encounter with Duna. And then Ike. Now I have added RCS, because when we were actually using the Planetary Explorer to get to Duna the first time. It was a beast trying to move this this stage right here. Uh, it was very sluggish, so I added the RCS to make it a little bit easier and controllable when we get out into the solar orbit. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, we're good. We had a little encounter with the moon, as we did the last time, which is perfectly fine. But we are not going to the moon. Why are you freaking out, buddy? We made it. We're in a solar orbit. Calm down. A glitch that I've found is that I can't accelerate with SAS on, and I don't know why. I think it just started happening too, which is weird, but when I take it off, I can accelerate beautifully. So I don't know what the reason for that is, but uh, that's not a problem. Almost there, and good! Whoa, what's going on? God damn it, Kerbin, let us go. There we go. Cool. RCS, go to the direction of travel, which isn't that far away. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Turn off RCS. Good. All right, let's go. See how far that gets us. Okay, gets us back into Kerbin's orbit. Oh boy. All right, you know, let's get out of Kerbin's radius here. Just get out of my way. Okay, good. And full throttle. All right, and we are crossing Duna's line, and right about now. So I'm going to slow it down, see how good we are, and it looks like we are dead on perfect. Yeah, just slightly above, which is perfectly fine. Beautiful. All right. Now we just need to make sure that uh, 
Everything over here is going to be good because I don't want to get back into Herbin's orbit. Uh, we should be alright. Alright, let's continue and see if we can find Duna. Make sure that your eye is pretty much focused right in the middle here so that you can really watch both of these. It's totally unexpected, you know? You could think it's coming up here, but it could be over there. So just make sure that you get both of them in your eye radius. Oh, I looked away for just one second, but I did see an encounter. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn, and uh, we're going to get that back. That's the nice thing about accidentally skipping over an encounter, is that you can burn and get it back. Okay, now burn very, very slowly, and it should come back to view. Beautiful. As long as Mr. Kerbin wants to leave us alone, we should be alright. I mean, we are going really fast, so we should have no problem skipping this orbit. Oh yeah, leaving Kerbin in the dust. Goodbye. Alright, cool. Now we just gotta swing around here and encounter Duna. I don't know if you guys see this, but this, uh, this debris right here is actually moving in the opposite direction of everything else. I don't know why. Why are you not going with the crowd? Are you unique or something? I've got so many debris patterns here. I mean, most of them are circular, but others, like this one, go really eccentric and actually almost hit the sun. So by that point, it's going really fast. And we are almost at an encounter. Let's see if we can actually see it from here. Okay, so here's the sun and the point of direction. We are pretty much facing it. So let's turn us around that way because the point of travel is this way. And we should see Duna. Ah, oh, right there. Yep. That's speck. And you know what's funny about this? You see the flickering and the you can actually see the red? That's what you would see here on planet Earth. If you look up into the night sky and uh, there's a beautiful view of Mars, that's what you would see. A flicker of red and white. That's cool. All right, let's move on. We still have plenty of fuel left. Like, really, plenty of fuel left. And then we've got this fuel, which, to be honest, I don't even think I'm going to need to use. We'll figure it out when we get there. Getting a little bit closer. Still a flicker on the horizon, but uh, actually, horizon. There is no horizon here. This is just an empty space. Now, we are above Duna yet again. This happens to me every single time I try to get here. We end up being a little bit above, which is perfectly fine, I guess. It would be nice if we actually had a straight encounter. Now, we are basically here. We can actually see it down there. Now I'm actually going to try something different. I'm actually going to get closer to the periapsis before I start to burn because I think it's going to be a little bit easier that way and we'll use up less fuel. Okay, so there we go. Now remember, you don't want to speed up too fast here. Patience is virtue. Alright, that's good enough. I don't want to pass it. I can correct my orbit to get into Ike's path later, but I just want to make sure that we have an orbit around Duna and that we don't lose this. And essentially what we are doing is slowing down our speed so that instead of, you know, passing right over Duna's orbit, it sucks us back in. And once it sucks us back in, we can regain our speed and we can fix everything. But the good thing about the nuclear engine is that it works beautifully in space. In fact, Damien Rain told me that this specific impulse, this 800, is the efficiency for a vacuum or space. So if you're going to travel in space, let it be this engine that takes you there. Kirk, why are you freaking out, buddy? Well, you got a nice view. I don't understand. I don't get it, buddy. I really don't. Okay, so we're almost at 500 meters per second. We're starting to see a slight curvature here. And around 200, it really starts to go. Really starting to turn now. You're going to want to slow it down just a tiny bit so you don't screw up anything. Now that may look weird. It looks like a caterpillar, I think. <laughs> or an inchworm. Yeah, an inchworm. Alright, now you really want to slow it down here. Come on, I need those rings. There we are. I'm going to stop right... about there. Yeah, that's good. Alright, now let's get down there. Ah, there we go. We can see something. <laughs> we can see Ike. And a little bit of Duna. It's a good view. <laughs> Alright. Bring in our apoapsis. Oh. Okay, we actually have an encounter with Ike already. See? Look at that. He knows we're coming back for him. So he just decided, hey, this is an opportunity to really express my gratitude that you're coming back to me. Or he just didn't care and he wants to suck every living thing that comes closer to Duna inside of his radius. Which, hey, that's fine by me. So we're actually trying to go there now. 
So I guess we'll just leave the orbit the way it is. We'll try to correct it when we get to Ike. Yeah, we've got another fuel tank on this, which should be perfect. And boom. We'll get close. To Actually, you know what? Let's just start burning now. Now, I wanted to point something out while I was doing this. So last episode, you saw that Ike was quote-unquote bouncing in the sky. And the actual correct term for that is called tidal locking. Duna and Ike have sides that face each other constantly. No matter where they are in relation to the sun, they face each other constantly. And I think that's really interesting. And uh, we actually landed in a good place to actually capture, you know, Ike and Duna facing each other. So what I'm hoping to do is land on, you know, this side of Ike so that we can look back at Duna and maybe see uh, myself over there. You know, it's going to be interesting. Whoa. All right, stop it there, please. Let's get to about where that periapsis is, actually. And we could try to fix this. I am really not good at this type of stuff. Okay. All right, so this is the direction of travel right here. And if I wanted to bring this side up, I'd have to go this way. Oh, jeez. All right, let's see if this works. This is absolutely not correct. This is absolutely not correct. Okay, what if I turn it to the left? Like I want to go left. Guys, I have no idea what I'm doing, so just please bear with me here. I'm learning this as we go. That is not the right way. But I do know that going right is the right way. So if you want to turn a certain direction, go the opposite way. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Beautiful, all right. Okay, stop it right there. Well, I, I generally want to go around this area, so I mean, we're good. And get around to the other side and bring it in. See, the problem is, when I, I'm trying to get it on the facing side of Duna, but considering it's moving at the same time, I have to wait till things line up. My periapsis is on the wrong side, so I have to go around and wait till it's on the right side. It's pretty much on the right side now, so once I get over to the apoapsis, I will bring it in. Alright, right there is good enough. Now I want to bring it into about right there, because by the time we get around there, it should be... Actually, we want to do it a little bit more. Good, right there. Yeah, because as you can see, it is turning. So even still, we can probably slow ourselves down here. Again, slow and steady. Alright, looks good, looks good. Turn, turn, turn to... God, I can't see anything. Okay. There we go. I guess you see the, the rocks already. Oh, beautiful. And the only problem with not being able to see the ground is uh, not being able to see the ground. That's, that's the biggest problem. Uh, <laughs> So I guess let's let's hope we're landing on a rock, because that's the only way I'm going to tell. We're about 9,000 meters above the surface of Ike. And closing. Kirk finally has a smile on his face. He knows what's going on. Alright. Oh my god, I can't see a thing. This is very, very risky, guys. Alright, you know what I'm going to do now? I am going to drop this. Oh, crap. I need to get out of there. Son of a bitch. Uh... Whew. All right. I was actually stuck on the rocket. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> now that that problem is dealt with, we have some debris on Ike. That's... Totally fine, as long as I'm not the debris. Oh, wait. Did we just do it? Are we landed? This was the most random landing I think I've ever done. Alright, let's, uh... <laughs> well, we landed on Ike, guys. This is something else. It is totally black. Oh, my. We have a nice... Oh, we did have a nice view. We have a nice view right there, but it's not right. For some reason, the ground is not showing up in this IVA mode. Huh. Well, that's, uh, very interesting. 
Okay, let's get out into EVA. Kirk, take the first steps on Ike. Let's turn on the lights here so we know what we're doing. There we go. God, it seems like a horror movie. <laughs> wow. Alright, let us get the sun to come up over the horizon or something. Well, there is Duna up there. And I landed just about there. Just about there. I mean, we can't see each other, obviously. But let's see if we can get the sun into view. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so I landed in this little craterish thing right there. All right, we can actually see what's going on around here. We've got a lot of rocks. Oh, we got some debris. Let's go check out the debris. How's the gravity? Oh my, that is pretty low gravity. It looks like a fuel part. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. Cool. Let's bring this back to the ship. <laughs> Use your muscles. Move it, Kirk! <laughs> no, we'll just leave it right there. It'll eventually get to us. Eventually. Alright, so we landed in a crater that has really nothing going on around us here. Yeah, I don't see anything. And there's the sun. I want to get a Duna Eclipse. Can I sit on top of my, uh, my pod here? Oh, there we go. Cool. Considering I showed you Bouncing Ike, I'm going to show you Bouncing Duna. <laughs> Oh god, I love it when planets just bounce out of control. Okay, let's, let's stop that before Kirk gets dizzy. Alright guys, well, we landed on Ike with a beautiful view right here of Duna. Ike got his glory, we did not totally ignore him, and the universe is finally in balance. Alright guys, I hope you all enjoyed, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.